So the title of the talk today is The Narcissist and the Guru. Quite a cheeky talk title. It's quite fun. So... Well, if any of you hadn't realised, I'm I'm sure that people that listen to me actually aren't really into the guru type of thing. Maybe there's some people that um, listen from Muji, but Muji really discourages you from listening to any other speakers, so I doubt there's that many of Muji followers. So the narcissist. So if you um, have been to a guru, you might notice that it's a little bit narcissistic, the whole display. You might not have noticed, you might have thought that this is very spiritual and religious and the person that's sitting on the stage or sitting up front is obviously channeling God and so therefore they are something very special. Um, And unique. Um, it's difficult to talk about this subject actually. I always say that about every subject. Um, But it is an interesting dynamic to have them on the stage like that, claiming that they are channeling God or that they are God. It's the same in to an extent what I do. I Instead of sitting on a stage, I'm projecting it through a camera. I'm sitting here live and talking about it. And I'm saying that God also looks through my eyes. That's quite strange. I'm sure everybody's had that sort of sensation before where you're not really sure if I'm a narcissist or they're a narcissist. Um, or whether this is really like a, the way it is. It's just that that's the way they are. Um, one thing that I noticed about what changes happened in my character is before I used to have very low self-esteem and I used to dislike a lot of myself. So... A lot of my parts I disliked. There's still parts on me that I would be open for improving, but um, there, there were a lot of parts I disliked and I had quite low self-esteem. And after the shift happened, I started to begin to really love myself and really appreciate what I did and really love what I did. And... Um, and just had a lot of love and appreciation for myself. Not in comparison to others, not thinking I'm better than others, but just really began to appreciate myself, which I'd never experienced before. Um, and I quite openly say that to people. A friend of mine has often suggested that I don't say it to people because it sounds really arrogant to tell people what you're good at or what you think you're good at or what you like about yourself or your um, positive qualities. But I can't help it. I just think it so it tumbles out of my mouth. I don't really filter. Um, and also to say that God or the divine is looking out of the eye, these eyes. It's not somebody that's looking out of these eyes. That's really huge statements to make, which could be, could be seen as incredibly narcissistic. But I'm not, I'm not as bad as some of the other gurus. Like I'm not sitting up there with all these flowers around me and people kissing my feet. I have had keep people kiss my feet before and I get a little bit shy. I don't know what to do. I just sort of tell them not to. There's a couple of times in India. But then they've done it already and they've kissed my foot and then...
So am I and are the teachers narcissists? I can't say I'm not a narcissist because I don't really know on the human level what I am. I'm just whatever I am in the moment, like whatever is appearing. So if I'm shy, I'm shy. If I'm happy, I'm happy. If I'm narcissistic, I'm narcissistic. I could say there are qualities and I've got in peep person, I'm a little bit shy and reserved. You know, I do broadcast myself in these talks. And I think it's really beautiful. <laughs> and I think I have a really lovely, lovely energy. So does that make me a narcissist? I do have empathy. They often say that the, the definition of a narcissist is not to have empathy. I do have immense empathy, but I sometimes wonder if a better teacher would have less empathy. Sometimes when you're the leader of something, you need less empathy in order to be able to um, think of the whole. If you keep feeling empathy towards everybody individually, then it makes it harder to lead. is part of the reason why I never want to set up an ashram or have people around me although that could be something that happens but I'm not the leader type I remember once reading in the Bhagavad Gita, it said the the the, um, the guru needs to have a huge ego, <laughs> and I really understood what it meant. Like if you think of someone like Muji or Sai Baba or um, these great teachers, Jesus, you could say in one way they've got huge egos in order for that position to arise. That position doesn't arise out of not advertising oneself, out of not pushing oneself to the front out of not dominating conversation. That position arises from doing all those things. And it's also God's will. That is the will of God for all of that to happen. To assume they're right. Being the leader needs all those qualities. This is why I feel like this is the perfect time for me to be a speaker now, because I can just teach my computer. I don't have to deal with all the human stuff and deal with like um, advertising or um, like very human dynamics. Like if you're leading a big group, which I do do sometimes, you have to really be, um, you can either do, you can develop, put the power in everybody's hands, which means that everybody's equal in that group, which ultimately everybody is. But if you give everybody total equality in that group, then that means that everybody has a total equal voice. And if you are the main speaker, that means that your voice is only going to be as heard as much as everybody else is. So what you have to do is you have to assert some form of hierarchy and you have to assert that your voice is the one that's predominantly to be heard which means that if you get somebody that challenges you which you often get in talks i get it a lot i'm not sure why i've met of sorry oops that slipped out of my mind now of each gender challenging me for my seat and um, I can either let them have the seat which I've done in the past I can argue with them which I've done in the past or I can ask them to leave which I've done in the past or I can get up and walk out which I've also done in the past you can do all those things 
It's interesting, eh? So is the guru a narcissist? It's the biggest definition of narcissist is they don't have empathy. Then no. If a definition of a narcissist is to love themselves, then maybe the answer is yes. And to think that their voice has value, their energy has value, their words have value. Well, that's the end of that. Now, what else am I going to talk to, talk to, talk about? Um, I could talk about a little bit of nothing if anybody's interested in it. So this talk has got nothing in it for you. Nothing in it for you. Oh yeah, before I do that, I have something else to say. Is that even if these characters are na narcissists, even if the character Lisa was a narcissist, or the character Muji, or Tony Robbins, or whoever else there is, was a narcissist. If they are a narcissist, it's God's will. There is actually nobody that's a narcissist. It's just what's happening in that moment. And there isn't actually a solid entity that's looking out of these eyes being a narcissist. It's something that happens, it's a formation that happens, just like a tree, just like a bird, just like the wind, just like the sky, but there is nobody that is the narcissist. There is nobody looking out that's experiencing that is a narcissist. There is a character that's a narcissist, and there might be identification with this, or there might not be. Just to finish that bit off. But anyway, back to nothing. So you assume, maybe, that you've come to this talk for something, but, you, but there's absolutely nothing on offer here. Nothing. Nothing. And I don't mean that in some profound way. I mean that the, what's being talked about here is not a thing found in this world, which then by defect makes it everything, but not a thing found in this world. So there's nothing on offer for you. This doesn't give you anything. It may improve your dynamics, it might improve the character, improve my character. It might also make your character a bit more of an asshole, a bit more difficult. You never know how, how it's going to swing. But there's nothing here for you. I, as I can, give you um, like a help on the personality level to help the personality be a little bit more balanced and... Um, be a little bit more happy but on the absolute level there is nothing here for you it's the same with all non-duality it's not just me it's with all non-dual speakers they're offering you nothing nothing there is nothing looking out of your eyes that person that you believe yourself to be that's looking out of the eyes is not looking out of the eyes there is nobody looking out of the eyes Looking is happening before no one hearing is happening before no one speaking is happening before no one there is simply everything as nothing, or nothing as everything. Even consciousness is too much of a description, because consciousness implies that it's conscious of something. But there is only everything. There is nothing that's conscious of everything. So whatever you imagine this is going to give you, it's not going to give you. But you, the character, thinks it's going to give you something. In some way, this story benefits you. Unless there is a hearing beyond the character. And that hearing beyond the character feels like love. This love. This vibrant, alive love.
Okay, let's just go to questions now. <laughs> I've run out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs>